Okay, we are on to day number 20. Uh, the chicks aren't actually due just yet, but I was just walking past and I just spotted something. And I thought I'd bring you in, because this is uh, what are you are looking out for. You can see, just there, like it's, it isn't easy to pick it up on the camera. But you can see just where the chick has started to pip. And that's what you call pipping. Where they just make a little hole in the shell. Uh, and then they can start to breathe through that. And then what they gradually do is they'll just work their way around the shell and then they'll pop out. And uh, hopefully we might try to get some of that on camera if we're lucky enough. But uh, yeah, I just thought I'd show you that bit. Okay, so I'm just jumping back in here again. Um, we're still waiting for the eggs to hatch. That last little piece you saw where the egg had just pipped. Um, let me just go over there and see how much you can see. No, hang on a sec, I'll flip on a torch. Go. Right, so you can see it in there. Like it's opened up a little bit more. And we've got one down at the front there that's also pipped. So this is just in the Octagon 10, and as I said, I reckon the Octagon 10 is going to be about a day ahead of the Janol 24, just underneath. But the reason why I flicked the camera back on, and the reason why I'm talking again, is because that last little clip you just saw, that was filmed at approximately 11 a.m. Um, it is now 10 p.m. or thereabouts um, and this is it you just leave the incubators alone you don't touch it there's no need to get in there and go oh no look at the little chick it's been struggling for 12 hours I must get in there and I must have it out don't you kill it um, it will come out it will be weak and it just won't be any good leave it seriously you just leave them be there's no need to jump in there. You don't need to help them. You don't need to encourage them. You don't need to do anything. You just need to leave it alone. We've not even reached day 21 yet. So I'm just gonna leave it. And uh, that's it. <laughs> it's really that simple. I know it can be really, really tempting because I've been there. I was a first time hatcher once and an inexperienced hatcher and you just want to do something you want to speed it up you think something's going wrong you think something else might be happening it's not it is just the chick hatching just let it be it will hatch when it's ready so um yeah i'm going to bed so i will come back down and i will see what we've got in the morning so here we go moving on a little bit further it's just after seven in the morning and you can see if you look, so I get the torch in the right place, there you go, we've got a chip. But it's come from that one at the front that I said it pipped. That one at the back, he's still there, he still hasn't hatched yet, he's still poking out his beak and, or her beak, whatever. So there we go, and we're still not going to open it. We're still not going to take the chip out. We're just going to leave it all be. And we'll come back and we'll have a look again in a few hours' time. Okay, we fast forwarded. Let me start that again. We have fast forwarded a little bit in time, and we are now up to the evening. And there you go. You see, it's quarter past ten. It is actually day twenty-one, but um, I just put that down there for a second. If you work it out properly from the time they went in. It was about 7 o'clock-ish at night that we put them in. So it's now day 21 at quarter past 10, so yeah. So in this top one, we have still got the one chick. There he is. Say hello, chick. And the he came out of the blue egg at the front there. The egg underneath it, that's pipped. One of the other ones has pipped. Him at the back, we're still not concerned about him. He's making that hole a little bit bigger, and he's moving about in there. So um, yeah, that's fine. And I'm gonna, I'm not sure how I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna have to take the camera off its thingy we do, Bridget. Let's see. There we go. There we go. Look at that, eh? Wow, there was three in here. Let's see, what are we up to now? We have got one, two, and a third one at the back. Is there any more yet? 
not that I can see. So this one down here, this yellow one, that's the newest one to hatch. Um, and we've got the one at the back. So yeah, um, we're just going to leave them be, let the other ones hatch. Leave them be until tomorrow morning. I'm not going to do anything, I'm not going to open it. We're not going to look in there, we're not going to add more water. We're just not going to do anything at all. And I know there's going to be people at home who are going to be screaming at your computer screens. You're going to be getting ready to make the comments. You two get those text out of that. No, you don't. You leave them. You don't do anything. They're perfectly fine. There's nothing wrong with them. Nothing's going to go wrong. They'll be fine. So we'll check back in in a minute. In the end, I will explain why they're going to be fine and why everything's all right. So, uh, yeah, give us some... Um, what should we do? Let's do tomorrow morning. Okay, so here we go again. We're on the following morning. And I've got my torch, as you can see. You can see we've got two chicks in there. Uh, I've got my dogs next to me. They're trying to see. And I must admit, I am really, really disappointed with this Brincy. I was hoping for so much more. It is an old machine, yes, I'll admit that, but um, the hatch rate from it has just been terrible. So we are getting close to opening these guys up now. It is getting near the end. That little guy at the back there is still moving about, um, but hasn't really done anything else other than that. So sort of sits there like that. Right, so if I unclip the camera again, and we'll go and we'll look at the ones underneath. This is where things... I'm going to give it away now. If I say this is where things change a little bit. Put some light in that and then look at them there's loads of them in there um, there are still a couple like these ones down here that haven't hatched sorry but the chicks keep standing in the way of my light so yeah there's still a couple in there that haven't hatched see who they all are hello 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 and um, there's a couple down the back there you probably can't see them just yet but also haven't hatched but some of them have come out uh, spotty, like that one just there. Which I think is quite cool. So yeah, we're really, really pleased with these. There's somebody else who's really pleased. Don't worry, she licks her lips. If she gets near them, she just licks them. That's all that she does. She doesn't actually go for them or anything. She's well trained. Um, so yeah, these guys will be coming out soon. There's no need to take them out just yet. I will explain why in just a moment when we actually open them up but I just thought you'd like to see that they're noisy as well, very very noisy okie dokie, well we've now reached that stage where we can't really wait any longer and I'm going to empty out the Janol 24 incubator and what we're going to do is we're going to put the chicks into what's called a brooder now brooders come in different shapes and different sizes and different ways. To start off with, everybody's going into this brooder here. Uh, but we do have another brooder which is up at the yard, which I will also show because they're all going in here to start off with and then we're going to work out which ones are being kept here at home because they can stay in this one and which ones we can take up to the yard into the other brooder and we can deal with it that way. So I said, I've said all along that I will explain why one, we haven't opened up um, the incubators and two when is the right time to actually open up the incubators so reason being number one we don't open up the incubators because as soon as you open up that incub that incubator you have to remember that inside there it's roughly 38 and a half degrees with all of the humidity and everything else that's in there and where you see the little chicks when they poke out their little beak you'll see the shell and just inside of the shell is the membrane and that's white when you open up the incubator you let in all the dry air gets in there and it dries that out very very quickly and it goes rock hard once it goes rock hard the chicks can't then get out of it which is why if you've ever had it in the past where you've had an incubator with eggs in it you've had a couple hatch and you think oh I just grabbed them out of there and you grab them out of there you go oh look my other ones have pipped already and then nothing else happens it's because the chick then can't get out of the egg because it's trapped um, where it's made its hole is now gone rock hard and it can't get through it. So the time when you're ready, you have to understand that chicks can remain in the egg for three days. Um, no, sorry, let's get that right. Chicks can remain in the incubator for three days. 
it's how they're able to survive because when they're just about to hatch they absorb into their body the yolk of the egg that's all that the yolk is there for it's to give the chick the energy the nutrition it needs for the first few days of life so from the time the first one hatches it can take three days and they're okay they're fine there's not a problem they don't need water they don't need feed they've got all of the nutrition that they need so you can just leave the incubator closed when you reach a stage where you think that most of your eggs have hatched which are going to hatch because even though we candle them and we hope they're all alive there might always be the odd one or two there are there are always is with me that don't hatch i don't ever do egg autopsies because i just think that's gross and i don't think after doing that i could ever eat another egg again but um yeah there are obviously there are some people that do so what we're going to do now is i think we've reached a stage with the genoa 24 there's something like 11 or 12 chicks in there that we're able to count um, so there's only another four or five i can't remember exactly how many were left in there that we were then going to do so we will get them pulled out now and we'll get them put into the brooder let me explain this brooder what you have is on the top here is a tub from a chinese takeaway contained within the tub is all of the gubbins and everything else that's needed for one of the STC 1000 controllers. That is currently set to 37.5, uh, 38.5 sorry, because that's the temperature that the chicks need when they come out. So that controls the light bulb in there. Now the light bulbs are red light bulbs, uh, also known as the fire glow light bulbs because they're the ones that quite often go in the back of artificial fireplaces. What else we've got in there? We've got some water in there. That is a big water container. We do have another little one uh, which also goes in there. And also going in there I will put in the feed trough. This is one of our old ones but it's fine. It looks rusty but it's not. It's just the colouring. And they will go immediately onto chick crumb. So this is the crumb and they will have that. Uh, you don't move them on to any sort of growers or anything else like that just yet. You just always start them off in crumb. In the bottom of there, you can see we've got some of that anti-slip matting. That's available online. It's about a pound for a square metre. It's really, really cheap. If you Handy tip. If you can't get hold of any of that, or... Let me close it up so it warms up still. Or if you need to do ducks, or if when the chicks get a little bit bigger they get a little bit messier you want to put something else in there one of the ideal things are the puppy training pads and if you go to Poundland or if you go to pets at home you can pick them up dirt cheap from places like that so yeah so that's that that's that that's that i think i've explained it all anything i've missed i'll try to explain in just a minute so i'm going to add the feed now put the feed into the thingy put it in there and then i'll bring through the janol and we'll open it up together and we'll have a look and we'll transfer over the chicks. I bet I'm going to have some help doing that as well. Right, okay, so now then, here goes. As you can see, we've got the chicks in there. And basically, as I was explaining, you're waiting for most of them to hatch. But if I just unclick you from there, and we go freehand for a second, you can see that it's pretty packed in there and you can't really make out all of the eggs that have hatched and that haven't hatched. Look, see, they're spotty. Where's Super Ted when you need him? Um, so, yeah. So, what we're going to do is we're going to lift them all out. Now, the family believe they spotted one with a bit of a dodgy leg. So, we'll try to keep an eye out for that one. As we lift them out, it's exactly the same as when we candled the eggs. We're looking to do it as quick as we can, but we're not going to rush it. And we're not going to slow down and take our time and take hours over it. Obviously, when these guys are born, um, with a hen, the hen is going to get up, the hen is going to walk off. They are going to be left in the open air. Like it's quite warm today anyway, it's about 23, 24 degrees, so we're quite lucky. So let's start having a look, shall we? And you can be the first people to see these chicks and see how many we've got as well. talk I, ha oh. I have got my helpers with me as I explained right I've possibly done it at the worst time Something's because I've got one just down in the bottom corner there that's still hatching but we didn't spot that yeah, so that hopefully 
everything will be all right. So, right, let's start off here. So there we go, that's number one. And they're just going straight into the brooder. That's number two. Can I get my one? That's number three. Can I get one, Dad? That's number four. Okay, you can see we've got one there with a splay leg. This one just here. It's where the wife jumps in. It's number five. Put splay leg one in and I'll sort it out once I've got my bit sorted. I'm to get that one. There we go, number six. If you want to get one, then get in there and get it. Don't stand about. Yeah, number seven. Oh, God. Number seven. <laughs> There's number eight. Another spotty one. Oh. I'll get the last one. Oh. And we've got number nine. Oh. Number nine that wants to fly off the way again. Oh, God. Num number ten, Gilea. Number 10. Yep, yeah, and you can see number 11. It's got one leg which is alright, and it's got one leg which is a bit splayed. Um, which is why it's not able to stand up. You can see as it's there. So, basically, what's going to happen is my wife's going to strap them together, and then they'll hopefully start to grow straight. We did have one in the past that did start to grow straight, but then um, it didn't carry on so I'm just going to put that down in between the water and the feed so what we're going to do is we're going to move quickly because obviously we've got that one which is still hatching I think it's going to come out soon see it just there so what we're going to do is we're going to clear out all of the old stuff would you like help with that? And then the eggs that are left, let's give them a quick check just to see if anything has happened. And no, nothing's happened with them. Refilled the water. No. Now we should be okay with this one because, as I explained, it won't come out in my hand. I know that much. So you can see the white bits. Can you? They then dry out, but this one has already made a nice big cut all the way around. So it's going to come out. There, there isn't anything holding it in anymore. I could help it, but it would also need to dry out as well, so I'm not going to. No, no. Although it is very tempting, I must say. It is so tempting just to help it. Right, let's grab the top. Mum, was that one of our stores? Okay, that's not me doing that one. You can obviously see <laughs> that one on the left-hand side there. Press your left-hand arrow, reverse it back five seconds if you didn't see it, and it was this one here was having a bit of a boogie. Boogie nuts. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna run these guys back, I'm gonna plug them in, and you can see just in here, underneath the red light. And the people walking around me not paying attention and hitting my tripod. That all the chicks are in there, so they're all obviously gathering in the warm spot. And uh, it looks like we're ready to go for the splayed legs. So I'll quickly explain the splayed legs. Uh, let me grab the chick first. So basically, what's happened is that you can see that the leg, rather than it growing straight down, is actually growing out to the side. Although it's on my finger, you can see that it's not right and it's not growing in the right place. So there is a trick of where you can use the shot glass and you can place the feet of the chick into the shot glass. Or the other trick is to use the elastic band method, which is what we're going to do. And you take a piece of straw and you basically use the piece of straw in between the two legs. A little bit closer, just like that. And that hopefully straps the legs together and then the muscles grow around them. No, it's going to be too big, isn't it? Yeah, it's going to be too big, but it's going to... That's fine, I can... Once yeah. I know the size... So then it straps the legs together. So then that then trains the muscles, and then they grow together like that. I can hear it. Oh, come on, pop it. Well, 
like I say, we had one like this before. I think it was the 15 day chick. It was. Yeah, that had it and it worked and the chick grew. But then once it became an adult, for some reason, it then reversed back to being not very good. I think it's because we didn't get it quite so quickly. But obviously you get these guys as day olds. Let me just trim that up. Sorry pumpkin. So this guy's still able to move around. Still able to go about everywhere. Still able to chirp. Chirp, chirp, chirp. I haven't got his feet, no. have I? No, you're fine. There we go. So there you go. <laughs> just, do it there. just held together. And whilst I've got the chick here, what I was explaining just a minute ago about the yolk, you can actually feel their bellies just underneath there. And you can feel the yolk within their belly. See, he's quite enjoying that, I think, having a belly rub. Oh, Go on then, need a bit of belly rub. I can. So yeah, we will, obviously, we, go, we are going to follow this chick through. So let me put him in. There we go. So I put him in and immediately he can't walk because obviously of his legs. So it's going to take him a little minute just to work himself out, work out how he's meant to be. But obviously the other guys are going to come in and they're going to jump in and they're going to have a look and see what's what. But they found the water, they found the feed and they seem quite happy to be in there doing that. So right, these guys in here are chirping away, I can hear them. So we're going to leave it there for a second and then we'll jump back and we'll have a look at the brooder up at the yard and then we'll be um, on to the next stage I think. Right, I am going to do the brincy as well. I'm not 100% sure if I'm going to include this in the video or not. So if you see it, you see it. If you don't, then you don't. Now, obviously we left this one because we had that chick that was hatching. And I think he might have died in the egg. So we've got this one. We can go straight into the brooder. And we got this guy here. And you can also go straight into the brooder. I must admit, I am really, really disappointed with this brincy. Nothing. 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 And yeah, and the chick has unfortunately died in the egg there. And nothing on that one. Right. I'll give these guys another day or so. See if we see anything or not. Okay, so here we are down at the yard, down at the farm, whatever you want to call it. And this is the brooder that I have down here. And you can see it's got the big lid, which has got the hard wire to it on the top. And then we've got the large area, and we've got two electric hens, and we also have a heat lamp that goes over the top. See, I've placed in the feed, and I've placed in the water. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the, the chicks in there now. And, um, yeah, they can run around in there. Excuse the mess in here. This is the first load after the winter. So what I'm doing is I'm putting in the chicks we put into here yesterday. So you can see I've brought them up. And the one with the splayed leg and the one that was halfway through hatching, that, that hatched about half an hour later. Um, they are still back at home and they will probably be staying at home. I'll probably leave them in this plus any other ones that hatch out as well. So let's grab them up and count them again as we go. There we go. So there's number one. Um, And number two. And number three. And number four. And number five. Six. Seven. Eight. Three up. 
9, 10, 11, oh, and 12. There we go. So, excellent, perfect. Let's lift that out of the way. So what's going to happen now is um, they will just basically spend a lot of time underneath these containers. These get warm. Um, that's the whole idea of them. So they act like an electric hen. So the chicks can go underneath them. They can get warm. They can stay there. Uh, they've got their feed. They've got their water, which is quite close. Let's move that a little bit closer. There we go. So the water's just a little bit closer. So what they will do is they will just start exploring now. They'll spend a lot of time underneath there. They'll then come out and then run back underneath. And we will check back in on them again uh, in a few days time. And I'll add that on. And what we'll do now is we'll watch these plus the ones at home, which are going to be in this other brooder box. And then we'll put them together uh, in about a month, maybe six weeks time. So keep watching. We, we are going to keep an eye on those ones at home because we still got other eggs which are hatching. Uh, we've also got the goose eggs as well, which are also hatching. Uh, the next video in the series, we're going to look at cleaning the incubators because obviously we've got to do that now. Or rather, once all of the eggs have actually finally finished hatching. We've got to clean the incubators and then we're going to watch these guys grow and see what we do with them, how we market them and what happens next, basically. So, yeah, keep watching. I'm sorry the chicks have all gone and hidden, but uh, as they're chicks, they like to just run to the warm places. So uh, please like, please comment, please subscribe. Leave us a little, leave us a little comment down below. Uh, I do read all of them. I do respond to whichever ones I can. And uh, until the next video, bye bye. As a chick comes reversing out. Put it back in in a second. No, it says I found something in the shavings. Actually, I'll tell you what, just before we go, I don't know if this will work or not, it might do. I mean, that might be the fun now. See you later, guys.